Thank you. Uh, of course, you're actually the, the eighth largest uh, generic drug maker in the world. Is that the, the yes, correct number? Yes, I think number? we are. We with yeah, I think we're in the top ten globally. Well. I, over the last period, you've actually had a very strong set of results. And just taking a look at some of the trends that are occurring on a global level, it seems that it's being reflective within the, the pharma and medical side of things. There's a lot of changes that could be afoot in South Africa. The NHI, they say it's going to work in your favor. Let's start off with that point. And what kind of scenario you're pricing in? Well, it's very hard to, to actually, until we actually understand more detail around the NHI, it's very hard to work out whether it will or won't be in one's favor. I think just sitting with, as an Aspen shareholder, what I, where I get some solace is to mm -hmm. know that Aspen supplies one in four of every uh, tablet you know, into the, both the public and private sector. We, we supply a very, very high proportion. So we play a very important role in both sections. And because of what we stand for, which is real quality, affordable products, strong in generics, I think we should be playing a big part in NHI. Mm -hmm. You know, how profitable it will be or less profitable, I think it's mm -hmm. still, I think the jury's still out. Of course, when we look at uh, anything to do with the public sector, we know that it's very high volumes and very low margins uh, yes. at this stage. Uh, tell us about your relationship with uh, the public sector at this stage, your government uh, in South Africa. We know that you do have a tender with the ARV on the ARV front. How's that working to your favor? Well, we, we're very strong across all the tenders. So if you take the latest awards in antibiotics and the TB, if you consolidate those, we had 24% of the tender. We were the lead across the, the two consolidated. The solid dose tender, that's tablets and capsules, 30%. ARV is about 40. And we've just won the infant milk formula tenders, two large portions of it. So, it, it, you know, we've got a good, we understand how government works. Um, in terms of the tenders, they generally can, they can work in your favor, particularly when you're looking for volumes to compete internationally. Um, and that's probably been the disappointing part of what's happening in this next year for us is the ARV volumes are, you know, were substituted with donor, with donor stock. And I so it, it does have a negative effect on us going to this What kind of period. effect are you expecting on that front? Well, you know, if you're budgeting on 80 million rand of sales and you're getting 30 to 50 percent of that, it's a, significant, mm -hmm. it's a significant loss. Not in sales. And, you know, the margins are slim, but you, you staff your facilities for that type of volume. So how are you going to uh, mitigate the, those risks going forward? Well, are you going we, to deal our with understanding that from government now is that, that that's, that's washed through and it will wash out mm -hmm. and by October and November we'll be back on track to the volumes that we uh, were projected. You, you mentioned the infant formula um, tender that you've actually just gotten. We know that you've actually lost the Pfizer infant milk formula uh, and now you've launched Infra, Infra Care uh, Gold and uh, it's basically a substitute product. Yeah. Tell us about the mix between the two. At the end of the day, it is about brand and brand awareness. Yes. Uh, how, how has that product been taken up? So Infocare is a bigger brand than, than the Pfizer brands were. So it was a bigger brand to start with. And we just launched the premium product, Infocare Gold, against, the, against that product. What we did do was uh, compete aggressively now in the public sector. And it's quite important to do one well in the public sector because mothers would then use your product going into the private sector in time. So we've done really, really well, and I believe we've closed the gap for the loss of that uh, license. So you, you speak of a 0% increase in selling prices, but you have experienced cons cost increases in salaries, wages, and electricity. Yeah. So clearly you haven't really been passing that on at this stage. We also know the Department of Health uh, is considering new regulations to cap the logistic fees. Yeah. It seems that these are perhaps some hurdles no, that's correct. The, the single exit price, you know, you can't pass it on because the government determined your sale price. Mm -hmm. And there's two components really to us. There's the, the cost inputs that you're talking about around salaries, wages, mm -hmm. electricity, our two biggest costs, which all, all have gone up. And then we had an import component, which was RAND denominated. Now, when the RAND was at 650 or 660, it mitigated it. But now certainly, at, uh, I saw your screen now, 730-something or 740, you know, it's, it, there's, there are cost pressures on, on our, in, in our business. So to show a turnover growth in South Africa was a really good achievement of no, of no price increases. Of course, the acquisition of Sigma Pharmacare, um, of course, is, is going ahead of schedule, it seems. Also interesting to note, within the Australian market, you're actually working quite closely, uh, they say, with Sipla India. Uh, give us an indication of the, the synergies that are occurring right now in Australia. So in Australia, we had our own business, which grew very well. If, you, if I go back to 2001, we did $7 million. So next year, which is our 2012 year, we expect to do over $700 million. If you multiply that out by whatever the exchange rate is today, seven and a half, so it's over $5 billion. Our South African operation is just over six. So mm -hmm. it's a very big business. It's going, to be, it's going to compete with our South African business in terms of absolute size in our portfolio. Uh, and the opportunity is, because we've got good mass, is to, to get good partners. And Sipla India have partnered us uh, in that geography, and we're looking to see what else we can do more broadly with them across broader geographies. And working within Sipla, with Sipla South Africa, is that a possibility down the line? Uh, yeah, I, I know Jerome <laughs> very well, and uh, you know, Jerome, is, it's, it's an arrangement absolutely independent of South Africa. <laughs> okay, well, I have to try and, and see if you would budge on that. Uh, revenue split, South Africa making up 55%, Sub-Saharan Africa only 9%, and your international operations 36 Are we going to see a, a 
re-rating occurring with regards to the revenue split down the line? Yes, you definitely are. You're going to see, I would think next year, you should, you should forecast for a much bigger uh, push from the, the non-South African businesses. The sub-Saharan African business has done really well. If you look at the absolute turnover, it's hitting 1.3 billion rand of sales. Um, and, you know, we've, we've, we've invested in Africa. We've put factories in Nairobi, factories in uh, Dar es Salaam, and we've got hundreds of reps across Africa. And, you know, hopefully now it's, it's, you can see the dividends they're paying. Mm. Operating margin at 25.4% from 26.2%. Mm. Can we expect a further decrease in the operating margin? No, I don't think so. I think that you might, you might see some increase in the overall group margins.